Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. I wanted to put together a quick video to share some great tips that you can use whenever you're trying to distort items along the sidewalls of your mood board designs. So if you've been trying to do this and you feel like you're struggling a little bit with getting it looking realistic, then keep watching because these tips should help. Now tip number one, the success of your distorted uh, items is going to be dependent on the original image that you brought into the design. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I use this image right here, I could try to distort this a thousand different ways, but it's never really gonna give me a realistic look. And the reason for that is because I can't actually see a bit of the top of the dresser or the side of the dresser. So if I try to distort this, it's just gonna look paper thin. Whereas if I take an image like this, even if it's not shot on the exact angle that I need for this design, I can see a little portion on the top here and I can see a portion on the side. So that's gonna give me that depth that I need to make this look more realistic for my design. So you wanna keep that in mind. And if this is in fact the dresser that you want to use within your design, pop over to the vendor site, see if they've got this product shot on uh, like in additional angles so that you can pull in the appropriate image. And if they don't, stick this image into a Google image search and see if it pops up anywhere else where there might be another vendor out there that actually does have the product shot on multiple angles so that you can pull in something that's gonna work for your design. Now, so that's uh, tip number one. Um, tip number two is that you definitely wanna make use of the uh, visual elements library and pull out this perspective grid. Use this in your designs because it's going to help you align items on the side walls and it's gonna give you the correct perspective to work within. So you can scale this uh, perspective grid up and you can shift it around and just get it into the right position. You can see here, if I just zoom out a bit, I've already added that perspective grid to my design. So I'm just gonna double click it and unlock it and I will bring the perspective back so you can see the full, uh, the full dark lines here. Now, in this case, what I'm gonna do here is I can layer in my perspective grid and I'm just gonna bring it forward a few layers here. So it's sitting in front of the empty room image but behind all the furniture pieces. And that's gonna help me use these guidelines so that I can match the guidelines and make sure that I'm working along the correct angle for the space. Now, when I have my perspective grid in place, I do wanna lock it down. I don't want that thing shifting on me because I accidentally clicked on it. So remember to lock it down. If you ever wanna release it, just double click on it. You'll see a dashed line that's gonna show and then you can unlock it. Whenever you need to work on your design board, just lock it back down again and then it won't shift on you as you're shifting other items around the space. Now I'm gonna zoom right in here and let's go ahead. We're gonna get rid of this dresser right here and we're gonna add it back in and I'll show you how I go about distorting these items. So I've got my dresser right here. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the background. So let's go ahead, we'll use the magic remover. Just get rid of that background image. Now we've got a nice clean product to work with. I'm gonna scale this down to be roughly the size that I need and we're gonna line this up over here. Now when I line it up, let's see here. Let's say I want it roughly here. I could choose to leave this um, on, but I'm actually gonna cut it off because I like having everything just cleanly cut so that it matches the edges of my empty room image. So before I distort this, I'm actually just gonna crop it and we'll just pull these corners in right here. And then what I'm gonna do here is we'll apply that. And now that I have this portion that I wanna use within my design, now I'm gonna distort it. So we'll click into the distort tool right here. I'm gonna use my grid as my guide. So I can pull this corner down and I can basically see, that's maybe just a little bit more here. Yeah, I think I could probably do just about that. So it looks like we're kind of getting the same angle as this line right here. And then this is actually not bad, but maybe I'll just slightly pull that up just a smidge. And then we'll leave that alone like that. I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna double click on my grid. We're gonna unlock it and I'm gonna push it all the way to the bottom so that I can get my uh, design board nice and clean again without showing those uh, grid lines. And then we can zoom in and see what this is looking like. So it's giving me a much more realistic look for this dresser. It's going along the, the correct angles of the space. So I'm not seeing any sort of like weird distorted items within my design board. And uh, it just makes the whole process a lot faster and easier. 
So definitely be sure to check out the perspective grid within the visual elements library and keep in mind the success of your distortion is based on the image you bring in. If you bring something in that's just shot square on like this, you're really going to struggle with making it look realistic. If you want it to look realistic, you need to find images that have a little bit of depth to them. You need to be able to see the top or the sides of that item so that when you do distort it, it's not going to look paper thin. I hope you found these tips helpful. And as always, if you have any questions at all, just reach out to us on the live chat. We're happy to help.